Welcome to a couple of Rad Techs podcasts where we bring you an inside look at the world of radiology from the unique perspective of a married couple of radiologic technologists. Together, we have years of experience, exactly 30 years in the field, and we are here to demystify the science of medical imaging. Radiology is the unsung hero of the medical field, providing doctors with crucial images and information that help diagnose and treat illnesses. Join us as we explore the latest techniques, technologies, and innovations in radiology and discover the vital role we play in the healthcare industry. So come along for the ride as we share our passion for radiology as a married couple. Welcome to a couple of Rad Techs podcasts where we bring you an inside look at the world of radiology from the unique perspective of a married couple of radiologic technologists. Together, we have over 30 years of experience in the field and are here to demystify the science of medical imaging. Radiology is the unsung hero of the medical field, providing doctors with crucial images and information that help diagnose and treat illnesses. Join us as we explore the latest techniques, technologies, and innovations in radiology and discover the vital role we play in the healthcare industry. So come along for the ride as we share our passion for radiology as a married couple. In this episode of A Couple of Rad Techs Podcast, I'm your host, Shandria, a radiologic technologist with over 21 years of experience in this field. Today, we're going to tackle a very important topic for those of you with an MRI scan scheduled soon. Exactly what everyday items you cannot bring into the MRI room if you want the procedure to go safely and smoothly. So let's get into this conversation because with over two decades in this highly magnetized environment, I've seen firsthand how normal belongings like jewelry, cell phones, and even articles of clothing can become serious safety hazards or even interfere with imaging. It may seem like common sense, but you'd be surprised what patients accidentally wear or bring into appointments without even realizing the risks posed by the powerful MRI magnets. Consider me your veteran guide through this extensive no-no list of items prohibited from entering the high-tech MRI suites. I'll explain exactly why mundane, metallic, and electronic belongings become dangerous when they encounter strong electromagnetic fields. That way, you can mentally prepare and properly unpack all prohibited items before changing into your scant issued scrubs. By the end of this episode, you'll be an MRI safety pro ready to breeze through screening with no unexpected surprises. The technologists will be so impressed at how informed you are and you can let them know you got it from me. <laughs> Let's get to it. Clear your pockets and secure any jewelry as we run through these extensive lists of contraband not allowed beyond the MRI chamber doors. Thanks for tuning in to a couple of Rad Techs podcasts. Now let's get ready to safely and confidently handle your upcoming scan like a seasoned pro. As a background, MRI machines utilize very powerful magnetic fields to produce detailed images of organs and tissues. We're talking about magnets strong enough to attract a paper clip from across the room with visible force. This extreme magnetism enables clear and non-invasive peaks inside the incredible machine that is our body. But it also means we have to be vigilant about metals in or on you during the scan. Because here is the main risk. Metals of any type can be strongly attracted, even dislodged by the magnets, becoming dangerous projectiles that can damage equipment and even harm patients. I wish I was exaggerating, but I've read case studies of metal objects like paper clips, hair clips, and even name badges becoming lethal weapons when brought unsafely into MRI rooms. The velocity these mundane objects can reach when pulled by the 10 to 30,000 Gauss magnets is shocking and hazardous. And from personal experience, I've seen things as small as bobby pins do some damage. And no one purposely brought them in. And not only damage to the machine, because a bobby pin can actually shut an MRI scanner down and, and cost thousands of dollars for it to be repaired. But imagine if it hits a patient's eye as it's flying into the scanner. All kind of things dangerously can happen to patients. So what precautions should we take? Well, before entering the MRI suite, you'll be asked to remove all metal objects on your body, including all jewelry, watches, hairpins, tools, magnetic strip cards. So if you 
don't want your wife's credit card to work or your husband's credit card to work, if it goes in the MRI scanner, it's going to be erased. Just saying. It's happened to me several times. Left my credit card in my pocket after coming back from lunch and it's wiped out. Cannot work at all. Had to go get a reissued credit card. Coins become projectiles. Ink pens, paper clips. I mean, the list can go on. Even doctors, when they wear lab coats, they can walk into an MRI scanner and you have little probes that they use to remove foreign objects from babies' ears, noses. When little children get things in there, they'll use this very thin probe to pull it out. I've seen where it's down in the doctor's lab coat and it's actually pulled out of the lab coat when they come near the MRI scanner. This is very dangerous. And this is why we ask you to pat yourself down, to check your pockets two and three times to make sure there are no bobby pins. Bobby pins hide in hairstyles, in wigs. I I find safety pins on especially older patients all the time. And you don't want that touching, especially fragile skin or sensitive skin, because the other safety hazard is burns. A lot of times we just think of projectiles, but burns are another safety hazard. Even small metal fragments we interact with on a day-to-day basis pose a major risk because of the sheer power of the scanners. You have to change out of street clothes. So even if you come dressed in sweats, t-shirts, you will and most likely be asked by the MRI technologist to remove any clothing that you wore in. Most of the time you can leave your underwear on, but everything else usually has to come off. That is the safest way for us to do your MRI scan without the worry of there being a safety pin hooked onto your clothing, metal in your clothing, in the thread. We just don't know. There are so many hidden dangers from things accidentally entering the room. Make sure to inform the technologist if you have any implanted medical devices prosthetic legs, and metal fragments inside your body from prior surgeries or even injuries. Why is this so important? Personal experience, my 21 years here coming into play, I've personally had an instance where brought the patient in, they marked on the paperwork, their safety screening form for their MRI scan, that they didn't have a prosthetic leg. They checked, no, people don't read the forms. So many people put no to a pacemaker and then they walk to the door and see the big sign that says no pacemaker and they're like oh I have a pacemaker but you are no one here what's going on (laughs) I have had that happen so many times back to the prosthetic leg had a patient come in checked no just a line straight down on each one that shows me right there most of the time you didn't read it so I have personally just made it my habit to when I see people just draw a line straight down I go through and say are all of these no Because most people, when they take the time to read, they individually will check yes or no. People that are not reading, they're just drawing a line down. This gentleman, and I think I learned from this experience to make sure I do that, because I was all alone working at a hospital, which many times as a contractor or a traveler, I'm usually all alone or or a PRN tech. I'm working the late shift, the shift nobody wants to work, and I'm by myself. And they went into the scanner, and all of a sudden, the leg just went and stuck to the scanner. I stopped the scan so fast. Like I hadn't even started scanning it. I was just moving them into the scanner. Can you imagine my face, the patient's face, it pulled the leg off. The leg was literally stuck to the outside of the MRI scanner. And when I tell you, I was like, how am I going to get this thing off of here? Because you cannot just pull things off of an MRI scanner. Even if a little bobby pin gets on your earring, you have to use a little more force than normal. And depending on the amount of metal that's stuck to these scanners, y'all, it's hard. It's real hard. (laughs) Eventually got it off with a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and the patient was helping me and just kept apologizing. But I was so happy that the patient was going in feet first and not head first. And that it did stick to the outside of the scanner. But it wouldn't have been my fault because the paperwork showed the patient said no. But it just goes to show how dangerous MRI scans are. Very dangerous. You have to look out for yourself, for the patient, for the machine. And that's why we are so adamant about what you have implanted in your body. You would not believe how many people don't know what's implanted in their body. 
They know they have something implanted, but they don't know what it is. They're given safety cards after they get the implants done and they lose them. They, they just don't keep up with them. I always tell my patients, when you have anything you weren't born with implanted in you and they give you a card, make a copy, keep it in your wallet, keep it in your safe at home because anything can happen. And everything is not safe for every situation. And they need to know if something went wrong with that part. The company has a serial number, a model number that goes along with that, say, stint that they put into your heart. So if something went wrong with it and they need to reach out to everyone, you'll say, hey, I have that model. But if you don't even know what's in your body, whew, I want to talk about stimulators at another time, spinal stimulators, because that is becoming a very popular thing. And I run into so many patients that do not know how to operate their remote to turn it off, who don't keep the remote charged who don't take it with them like they're supposed to. And it just is very dangerous. And they're getting MRIs all the time. I, I love to talk about MRI safety because we have to do so much, not only the things I've mentioned, but the staff, we have to adjust MRI protocols based on these disclosures, things that you tell us. If you tell us you have a certain implant, we will not scan you like the stimulators. If they're safe, because not all are safe to be scanned, I have to look at this, the type of implant you have, go to the company's website, make sure I can scan your whole body and not just your head because certain stimulators, you cannot do a full body. And if the doctor's ordering a full body scan, really bad things can happen. And that's why it's so important for us to know and for you to disclose what objects you have in your body, on your body. I always ask the patient as well, do they have any pain patches, medication patches, nicotine patches? You would not imagine how many people Forget they have pain patches on. I get a lot of patients who are like, oh, I forgot I had this on. And they're got them all down their back, tons of them. And that's really not going to allow you to get a safe MRI because they have metal fragments inside of them. But when it comes to MRI safety, this is why we're so vigilant because so many accidents do happen when we don't communicate and our patients don't communicate back with us. That is one of the important reasons why we ask you to do all of those things. We're not just being mean and making you have to change in this cold hospital. <laughs> we want to make sure you're safe. And if you're unsure, always ask the technologist. Just say, hey, I've got this on. Is this safe? I can't get my wedding ring off. Is it okay to keep it on? You know, I have these waist beads. That's the other thing. Some patients come in with these waist beads. I don't really know what they're for, but you guys can look it up and tell me what, what it's for. I think it's for something about weight loss. I'm not sure. But I've run across certain ones that have, they have to come off because when I wind the patient down, use a metal detector, the alarm goes off. And then a lot of times they're not, they're just actual beads. If that alarm goes off, we have to take them off. And a lot of patients do not like to have to remove things that just can't be put back on especially like those bracelets that you need a key to get them off. We get those a lot. The people leave the key at home and come and get their MRI scan. It's got to come off. If the metal detector is picking up that this is not a safe metal, it can pull it, injure you. If it flies and hits you, it can injure the technologist, tear up the machine. It can also burn you. That is one of the worst things that can happen as well is a burn. And we don't talk about that that much in MRI. Burns happen many times, especially when you leave little things on like pain patches, medication patches, any kind of patches. You let the skin touch coils because the, the MRI scanner, the coils heat up. And for certain skin is a little more fragile and certain things just are not MRI safe and should not be on the patient when they enter the scanner. If my patient is coming from the floor or is an inpatient, they have EKG leads on them usually. They also have gowns in the hospital that have snaps on them. In MRI, if you notice, we don't have any gowns that have snaps on them because those snaps are not MRI safe. They'll cause an artifact. They can burn a patient. When I get a patient from the floor, I take the snap gown right off of them. I'm like, no, we're just going to go ahead and change you. I'll change a patient right there on the table. And when I'm changing them, I roll them over to check their back for EKG leads because if they're in a the hospital for any period of time, those things, they just start migrating all over the patient's body and a nurse puts on new ones and never takes the old ones off. I just check you and make sure you don't have any because I have never hurt anybody in these 21 years and I'm trying to keep it like that. Safety is top priority 
us as MRI Text. Be sure to come back and we're going to talk about even more things, but I want you to go to the comments and let me know what are some of your questions when it comes to MRI safety? What are some things that you've maybe not been asked to do or have been asked to do? And what are some things that you've always wondered about before your MRI scan? I'll talk about it here on a couple of Rad Text podcasts. Catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. And that's a wrap for this episode of a couple of Rad Text podcasts. We hope you enjoyed our discussion of the fascinating world of radiology and learned something new about the role we play in the healthcare industry. If you have any questions or topics that you'd love for us to cover, feel free to reach out and let us know what they are. And you guys, please, if you enjoyed this podcast or any of the other episodes, we want to hear what you thought. Leave us a review. Mama's got to pay her bills. It helps. And until next time, stay tuned for more insightful and informative episodes of a couple of Rad Text podcast. I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. Thank you so much for listening. This is just one of the many free resources I offer to my clients to dump unhealthy habits and begin living. Be sure to visit my website for more free resources and health coaching. Again, thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with others so they can join the Let's Chit Chat podcast Have a great day, you guys. See you next episode.